Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you get any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking degenerate. And I know you're a degenerate, don't even try and deny it. You're playing true fucking Draco. And if you're not playing true Draco, you're at least considering it by virtue of the fact that you're watching this video. So it goes without saying that for today's video, we are doing a true Draco deck profile. It's definitely not something super refined, but it might give you a good idea of what you could try out or where to start if you want to go ahead and play yourself. We've also got a list of cards that you could definitely consider trying out or could definitely be used in the deck in the side deck rather than having an actual side deck because they basically just vary depending on what kind of event you're attending. Now the deck has definitely lost a lot of its power, but it is still super playable, particularly it just wants other rogue decks. And you'll also get scalps so you absolutely have no right to go ahead and take by virtue of the fact that you're playing 5,000 fucking floodgates. On top of that, the deck does have a natural ability to be able to play going second, not quite as strong, but all of the cards are built in to allow you to break boards. So for someone who isn't particularly clued up to the game, maybe technical play isn't your strongest point, maybe knowledge of the meta isn't your strongest point, then this is the kind of deck that's good for you. And on top of that, it's relatively budget friendly because you don't need an extra deck and most of the main deck cards have been printed into oblivion. So for all the hate it gets, who fucking cares? We enjoy the taste of those salty tears. Get yourself some true Draco action. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling all riled up and inspired to go out and pick up your Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that link, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into this absolute fucking cesspit. Okay, so before we get started, let me first apologise if you can hear a whirring sound in the background. That is probably my fans going absolutely fucking mental, which they do every time I open this goddamn simulator. Hopefully, though, we can edit that all out in post-editing, and it will sound as smooth as fuck. But anyway, enough waffling, let's get stuck into the profile. So we start off with a single copy of Dynamite the True Draco Fighter. It's at one, so we're only playing one. If it was at more, we would play more. We've got triple copies of Ignis Heat, of course. Ignis Heat is Ignis Heat. We need to play three copies of it because we want to see those spell cards as quickly as possible. And then two copies of Majesty Maiden. There's plenty more than this is just a brick. Now, for the most part, that's a pretty standard Draco lineup. I'm sure most people will agree and be well aware of that. We then have a double copy of Amano Iwato. This is particularly strong at the moment. It's definitely stronger than Inspector Border in the current meta. Definitely, I think, the better option to run. You don't actually have to run this in there at all, but I really like the fact that it gives you extra protection. With so many combo decks on the loose, plenty of decks that don't really have that ability to set up a load of back row will play with lots of hand traps, and of course this helps protect you against them. On to our Draco spells here, so Triple Draco Heritage, pretty self-explanatory at least in my opinion, it just draws you deeper into the deck. Triple copies of Disciples, being able to just reuse those resources, absolutely fantastic, it's one of the best things about this deck as a whole. Now we're on to our Glorious Field spells here, which we have a few different ones in here. We start off with Diagram, of course it's limited, so we're only running one copy, we don't really have a choice about that. If we could run more, we absolutely would. But then again, we wouldn't be having this discussion because it would be a perfectly viable meta deck towards the top end of the meta. A single copy of Domain of the True Monarchs. This is just another Floodgate-esque effect, one that we, of course, like to abuse in this kind of deck. That's exactly what this deck does well, so that's exactly what we're doing here. We then have double copies of Mystic Mine. You could up this to a third if you want to, but honestly, I think that it's just good enough to have two copies, and that works absolutely fine. This card can be an instant win button. You have so many other cards in this deck that can control exactly what happens on the field already, that your opponent normally, if they're faced with this during game one, is not going to have an out to it with all of the other floodgates and options that you have, and they're almost guaranteed to lose. Now, after game one, you'll probably want to side these out because it'll be less prominent or maybe go down to one so that you don't rely on it as much. But honestly, I think not having this in for game one is an absolute tragedy. I fucking love Mystic Mine. I fucking love free wins. I fucking love having this card in this goddamn deck. You need to run it. We have a single copy of Terraforming because, well, field spells are a thing, so we need it. 
On to our pot options here. So we have triple copies of Duality. Uh, again, most of this is pre pretty cookie cutter as with most Draco decks. I'm sure I don't need to elaborate on that. It just digs us deeper. Much the same for Desires. I think anyone not running this in here is absolutely fucking insane. A single copy of Carded Demise because it's at 1. And a single copy of Into the Void because it's also at 1. Again, as you can see so far, all of our spells are geared towards either getting that whole strategy of just locking our opponent out of plane or digging as deep as quickly as possible so we can get the game out of the way. Next up, we're on to our actual Draco traps here. We've got just two copies of True King's Return. I actually felt like running three at first, but to be honest with you, from my experience, it actually gets kind of bricky at the moment without having as many monsters to target. And the fact that you don't actually really use the revive effect all that much, certainly not as much as you did before, means that it's not as strong, and I think the two copies is more than sufficient. We then have triple copies of Apocalypse, the mandatory uh, three of, um, pretty sure I don't need to elaborate on that. We then move on to the Monarchs Erupt. I'm running triple copies in here because I want to bullshit my opponent as much as possible. And this card enables us to do that. Much the same with Skill Drain. It's another floodgate. I'm sure I don't really need to elaborate. We've got a single copy of Meta first. This can actually fuck your opponent up so much. If you can see this and then you can activate the, the Domain card during your opponent's turn. You can actually lock them out quite heavily from being able to play their strategies. And the same with the, any of the other field spells. Of course, accessing Mystic Mind during your opponent's turn is pretty funny as well. But you get the point. And then our nominated Flog Gate for the format. There can be only one. This is actually fairly interchangeable. You don't have to run this. This is just the one that I like. But you can swap this out with any other Flog Gate you like. And it will be perfectly viable. Now, as discussed, of course, we don't have an extra deck because this is an extra deckless build. I have, however, decided to give you a list of cards you could consider using in your builds or side decking. So this side deck you see here, of course, isn't actually a side deck, but again, you get the point. So here we've got Imperial Order. Imperial Order is Imperial Order. You can actually main deck this, and I'd probably encourage you to try and find the space to do so. Very, very powerful card. Absolutely fantastic. There's some games where you'll just auto win by having this card available. Soul Drain for switching off Graveyard and Banish decks, of which there are plenty in the game. Mind Drain is far less useful, but it is good as an anti-fucking hand trap card, which is something that's quite nice. Summon Limit, this can usually be the preference if you don't want to run there, can be only one. There's some decks that lose just fucking so hard to this card, it's unreal. We've got Solemn Judgment here, but largely this just represents the whole Solemn Brigade as a whole, depending on how the format shifts, depends on what you might want to play. I really like Solemn Judgment in my builds, quite often I will run it, I've just chosen not to put it in this particular build. After that we have Rivalry and Gozen Match, if you're not familiar with what these do, you haven't really lived the joy of having them flipped on you. These are just win buttons against the right decks, much the same for Macrocosmos and D Fisher. Uh, these can really hinder the right decks if you're lucky. We have the Monarch Stormforth. We could actually use this in conjunction with other Monarch cards, which we've got one more in here that I can show you. This, again, is just particularly strong against certain decks. So if you want to use this, it's something you can definitely look at. Set Rotation, we're running a million field spells. So I just don't really want to give any of these to my opponent for the most part. But to be honest with you, you could definitely main deck it because none of the field spells give your opponent any kind of massive advantage. So, unless you're playing in the mirror match, of course. But for the most part, I don't think this is necessarily needed during the current format, but it's something that you could definitely consider using. Dark Ruler, no more, because we just want to ignore combo decks. When we need to go second, when we know we're going to be forced to go second, this deck is very good at breaking boards. However, it is going to struggle to deal with some of the negates of boards that the modern combo decks are going to put out. So by using this card, we're going to switch off all their effects and then break their boards systematically. And usually, with how resourceful this deck is, we're going to outgrind them for the rest of the game. Forbidden Droplet is in here because it's a far less budget-friendly option. And this is a budget-friendly deck for the most part. So something that you may want to run if you've got access to it. It's fantastic in here because we have such a good access to spells and traps in particular. And this is going to help you do all kinds of things to deal with your opponent. It's also worth noting if we use Droplet to send the spells and traps, we can, of course, pop additional cards as well, which is absolutely busted. As alluded to earlier, we have more Monarch options in here. There's so many Monarch cards you can actually use in this deck that work really well. Pantheism is one of them that you can definitely consider running. And then finally, I've actually seen a lot of builds making use of Eldritch. To be honest with you, if you're going to play Eldritch, you might as well just play pure Eldritch or any of the variants there. But if you're one of those people that just so happens to have Eldritch and a few of the cards kicking them out, you could probably try them out in this build and see how you get on with it. It's just an option for you to consider.
And that, amigos, is all for today's video. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you've managed to stick it out and make it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, hopefully hit that thumbs up button, maybe even the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Whichever category you fall into, thank you very much for being here. I do genuinely appreciate it. Now, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. If you want to go ahead and see some other stuff, such as other deck profiles, combo tutorials, how to play videos, general discussion content, all of that good stuff, then this might be the channel for you. However, maybe you're an existing viewer of the channel and there's something that you would like to see, or maybe you're a new viewer who would like to see something that you haven't spied amongst the videos that we have out there. Definitely reach out and let me know. I do pay attention to as many of the comments as I possibly can, and a link to all of my social media accounts are in the description. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for being here, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.